Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> sometimes what is going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to episode 51 of the mindless sword podcast yes as you guys know last week we hit our 50th episode of the podcast and we yes. had uh, our last guest of summer of guest which was tlev yes. now we're back to just uh regular nights of horror summer of guests was fun we had a good time oh i had such a great time with summer of guests I'm sad that I missed out on some of them, like SoCal Exploring and the one we did with Losh, but yeah. overall, it was a great summer. I mean, we had so much fun at Midsummer Screen. We had Fractured Compass on twice to promote their uh, their short SCP, yeah. and um, they, we had them on just to talk about the Knots panel, just to talk about yeah. news in general. We had a good time, and I really enjoyed it. Now it's back to, uh, just back to Miles for Podcast. Back to basics. Back to the basics. Hey, but you know what? We have 400 subscribers. 400 subscribers, man. That That's a milestone for the channel. I never yeah. thought when I started this channel that I would even get to 100. And when that happened, that was just insane for me because it was one of those things where it was like when I hit 100, it was like, wow. Yeah. There's people watching. <laughs> yeah. And then I hit 200 and it was like, wow. There's people, even more people even watching. Even more people watching. Then I hit 300, and I was like, wow, people are still continuing to support and watch. Yeah. That's fun. And now I'm at 400, and I cannot be more thankful for everyone. So big shout-out to all my fans out there. Um, big shout-out. Big shout-out to them um, in the words of mystery. Uh, but, yeah, we're, we're, I'm so excited just to be be here and 50 episodes of the podcast, um, two years on YouTube, too. Yeah, it's just celebrated two years. Celebrated two years, uh, 400 subscribers, and 50 episodes. It's just, there's been a lot of milestones. Hey, big things are happening. Big things are and happening. you know what? We're just a couple of weeks from uh, opening getting, night. Getting terrified at opening nights. Yeah, man, it's coming, man. The first one we're going to hit, uh, at least me and Tammy will be there, is opening out of HHN. Yeah. Uh, so catch us there if you September see us. September 13th. September 13th, that should be good. And then the next week is... Not. Not Scary Farm, yeah. That'll be the and 20th. I know me and you are going to be there for sure opening day. Yeah, we'll be there. Um, so that should be fun. We're going to see a lot of our scare actor friends. And um, I will put my pants. I'm going to wear the pants. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Just kidding. It's going to be hilarious. Yeah. Um, You're going to have to protect me, Anthony. Of course. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna get you around. The only way I know how to get around Not Scary Farm. Carefully. Carefully. Um, I, I, it's going to be actually It's gonna be an exciting uh, time this year because this is going to be... The first time on the channel outside of Horror Nights that I actually film other haunts. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be exciting for that, and then the weekend, the week after that is Haunted Hayraid. Yeah, we got a packed schedule in September. Yeah, and I think that either same weekend of either Haunted Hayride or Not Scary Farm, me and Tammy are going to uh, Queen Mary as well. That's the weekend of Knots, I think. That's the. That's Sunday. Yeah, yeah that Sunday we're going to Queen Mary, so yeah. it's gonna be a packed one. But you'll you'll catch us mostly a lot this uh, haunt season at Halloween Horn Eyes and at um, Not Scary Farm because we're getting frequent fear passes yep. for Halloween Horn Nights and we're getting the uh, Knots annual pass, which you'll probably catch us at Knots way more this year because yeah. we live literally twenty minutes away from it. Not even that, probably like fifteen. Yeah, so there's no reason why we can't go on a Thursday or Sunday. Yeah, and just go hours. for like you know four or five hours at the most, maybe yeah. even less, you know, and just. Go say hi to our character yeah, friends. Just go to hit special ops, you know? Yeah, just hit special ops for that last one. Um, so, yeah. Also, uh, this Thursday, we're going to be actually live streaming the Not Scary Farm annual pass holder. Um, not uh, a press event, I guess yeah. you want to call it. And uh, we're, we, we didn't get a chance and opportunity to actually go check it out. I, I want to say my girlfriend, Tammy, is going to be taking one of my cameras and she's gonna go film it so not only will you see a live stream of us talking about the event but we'll have footage of of course if you want to watch it over and over again we'll have footage of that hopefully on the channel this yeah. week or so next that's week the beauty of having multiple people on the channel i know right we got you know we got the girl my girlfriend tammy and her and her group the old timers they uh they're like our entourage but they also like they help out a lot on the channel yeah, they're anthony's number one fan yeah so, um, thank God for them. And then we got, of course, you, who oh, does course. all the thumbnails and co-host yeah. of the Mindless Horror Podcast. Yeah, carrying the load. also there when I need him. 
Anytime. Anytime. Um, we got Robert, who's our photographer, and he's yeah. he's there when we need him too. Yeah. It's uh, it's the the Knights of Horror brand is just growing. Growing. If you want to join us. Too bad. Too bad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. No, maybe when we get later on, like bigger and bigger, maybe we'll get more people, like editors and stuff like that. Hopefully, hopefully and yeah, that'd be really cool. But um, yeah. Bloody disgusting. Who, right? Bloody disgusting, man. That's our n- number one news source that we use for the Miles Horror podcast. Yeah. By the way, not sponsored by them, but we just we use it for the podcast. Yeah, and if you ever want us to cover anything too, if you want to hear our opinions, we got opinions on everything. Just yeah. Let us know. We do movie reviews and stuff like that, which uh, we'll probably make a podcast pretty soon on Ready or Not. Um, oh, yeah. Because we just saw such, that. I had such a good time. That's a fun movie. It was. It, it generally was, was a fun movie, fun and I was expecting it to suck, and it was actually genuinely a fun movie. Yeah, what's, her, what's her name? Something Weaver. The yeah. I know what you're talking so about. Good. She's so good in that movie. But we'll do that. That's another video for another time. Yeah. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about some horror news that I picked up, Blood Disgusting, and HHN has announced. So yeah. let's get started. HHN released their first um, trailer for the event this year. I came out, seen it. Just came out today, um, and I'm working on a video breakdown. If not, the video breakdown's already out, but as of this recording, I'm working on it still. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. It's called, it's entitled, it's called Halloween Horror Nights Presents Watch Party. And it's supposed to be very 80s themed, like okay. th- these. I mean, it's it's modern day, but these kids are having like an 80s themed party. Um, they go down to uh, this house, and like th- these friends are hosting this party, and you know they're, they're you know they're side chit chatting about you know who would win a fight, Frankenstein or the Wolfman, and we know wow. that's gonna be a maze this year. Yeah. Um, and then you know they they the two guy friends they sit down on the couch and they start watching Stranger Things. Of course. And um, they talk about how uh, they talk about Eleven's powers and stuff, and then the door. It's a one of those kitchen doors where it just you know closes back and forth like yeah, old yeah. school um when that when that door closes like they disappear and they end up in the upside down Whoa. you see some uh, you see the mind flare the demogorgons um it, it's a pretty detailed trailer and then of course wait, so wait I, before you, i know i don't mean to interrupt you how is it gonna do the mind flare do you think projection projections or they might actually build like a a puppet of some sort i don't know i'm, I'm curious myself to see yeah. that uh only time will tell huge. yeah that's what she said <laughs> of course. Um, well, back to your video. Back to the video. Uh, and then from there, we, we see a bunch of uh, other stuff, uh, other um, people. One of the coolest parts in there was, of course, uh, one of the girls is in the bathroom. I think either she's changing or she hears a noise or something, and it's uh, she sees herself, and it's us. Oh, that's smart, yeah. So it's the tethered. So um, that was pretty cool, that scene. And then the last scene, of course, consists of uh, one of the girls – uh, she she goes out in the kitchen and th- there's a blackout p- uh, power outage and um, Dracula then comes and kills her. So they were representing Universal Monsters on both ends of the coasts and stuff, oh. which was cool. They were trying to do a little bit of dose of both coasts. Dose of both coasts, man. That's East versus West right there. <laughs> no, but the, the overall trailer was mostly promoting, um, of course, Stranger Things, Universal Monsters. It's like the shared properties, basically, right? Us and I believe those are the only three properties that they were really focusing on for the event. Like it looks like those are going to be their three biggest properties at the event this year. That's that they're trying to market. I'm surprised they didn't try to do anything with House of a Thousand Corpses in there. Um, I because I don't think it's as big as those three though. That's true. Like that's a cult. That's got a cult following. Yeah, us because it's very still relevant in pop culture. I mean, yeah, that came out just this year. Killed last year. That's gonna kill. Well, I mean, it's the Universal Monsters too. They they own them. They own them, and not only that, they're they're huge. They have a huge following since like the 1930s and stuff like that. That's That's got another huge following as well. Um, It was very 80s inspired, which I like too. Um, Another another great podcast we did with TLEV, huh? Yeah, the uh, live stream that we did with TLEV. Uh, it's on their channel if you guys want to go watch a five hour podcast <laughs> a live stream of that was cool we had fun um of course the last thing that uh hhn announced this week uh in hollywood at least was the uh, final maze that we're getting at the event which was the curse of pandora's box yeah. and i know we went into detail and talked about it on the east versus west episode last this week um so i'm just going to give a brief rundown i mean of, of course it's supposed to be a, a greek uh mythology uh, maze, and I thought that was a really cool concept. Uh, if you guys know anything about Pandora's box, I mean the backstory behind it and all that, it was like, uh, like they were they were trying to test moral man to see if they would, if the yeah, perfect it was human the would. That Zeus gave to Pandora. Yeah, that if he can, if he can resist opening it or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah she couldn't open it. And, and also, I was kind of thinking about this, and I didn't mention this on the East versus West, but 
they're trying to make her really creepy. Yeah. Um, which I think is gonna be really interesting to like really encounter Pandora. Exactly. I think that was her talking in the trailer too, right? Yeah, that that was her with the poetry. Yeah. Which is the first time that John, uh, has ever written poetry for a maze. So. Oh, fun fact, huh? You looked that up. Uh, he said it on Twitter. That's cool. Um, first time, John, first for everything, huh, John? That's awesome. Um, so yeah, we got the full uh, announced uh, lineup for both coast at least, um, and we're very much looking forward to this year. We're gonna do an episode this week on East versus West. If not, if it's already out already, it's out. But if it's not, it's coming sometime this week. But uh, we're gonna do an episode where we uh, rank our mazes for most anticipated and least anticipated. I gotta sit down and actually think about it. It's gonna yeah, be I mean that's why you got a couple days to do it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to like, actually think, think and stuff like that. I don't um, ever think. No, that's not true. You do a lot of thinking on the on the on the channel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're gonna move on to the next bit of news: Dead by Daylight, the famous horror game that's on uh, pretty much every console and yeah, PC it's now. Such a fun game. Yeah, it's it's th now lately they've been doing a lot of DLCs uh, based around pop icon killers like Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, Leatherface. Uh, they did Scream. It's a great way to make money. It's a great way to make money and to promote things. Yeah. Um, and their newest. Have you ever gone against the Michael Myers character? No, I have. I don't have that DLC. I have Leatherface, and that's about the only other killer that I have, really. Well, so they don't have to have the killer to play against them. Okay. But I've played against the Michael Myers. He's OP. Sucks. You can't hear him. Oh yeah, that's just because he doesn't have a heartbeat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's okay. That's yeah. just how he is in real life, though. It's cool though. Yeah. Um. Dead by Daylight announced a, an awesome DLC that's coming because of the pop culture of uh, and the phenomenon that Stranger Things is. They are going to be doing a Stranger Things DLC, and in this DLC, you get to play as heroes Stacy and Nancy, and for villain, you get to play as a Demogorgon. That's really cool. I'm very much looking forward to that, only because like I, me and my cousin have played this game yeah. for fun, and um, we were playing it not too long ago actually, and we had a, a really fun time. And, uh, yeah, I, I want to see what this DLC is going to be like. I can't wait to see gameplay. Yeah, I mean, we, we may have to do a little... Let's play in it. A little let's play. A let's play. we got to buy the DLC, too. So it's probably going to be like five bucks. Yeah, we'll see what happens. That's not too bad. Uh, at least one of us can buy it, and then the other ones can play as... Play as other people. Yeah. We just do, do let's plays in that in general. That'd be fun. Yeah. Um, get a group together. Yeah, let us know if you'd watch. If you watch uh, Dead by Daylight Let's Plays with the Knights of War crew, we'll do them. Yeah. Um, Kyoto Brothers, Killer oh, Clown, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, right? Those, that's yeah. a, one of our favorite movies by them. Um, well, at least yours. I mean, it's I don't mine. Else by them, so um, I guess it's my favorite by default. So they made a, and they, and they made this, uh, this book called Alien uh, Xmas, and they're gonna turn it into a stop motion animation movie for Netflix. Huh. That's really cool. So I'm, I'm curious to see more about this. I've never heard of this project by them, but um, it's the Kyoto Brothers, so I'll watch it. Yeah. I mean. People love Killer Clowns. So I don't, I don't guarantee that they'll like this. Especially if it's stop motion animation. That's pretty... Do you know how hard that is to do? It takes forever. Yeah. And that's probably what they've been busy working on. No wonder why we couldn't get them on the podcast. Yeah. Hopefully next year. Hey. Summer of Guests next year. With Summer of Guests with Chiota Brothers? Chiota Brothers and John Mazzari. Let's get them all on. Maybe if we plan it like ahead of time. Yeah probably be good hey and if you want to see anyone next summer on summer of guests if you guys got any suggestions that we can hopefully get on the podcast uh leave them in the comments below and we'll try to get some people on summer of guests that uh hopefully we could try to get <laughs> yeah or if you want to be on summer of guests who knows who knows um so yeah i'm, I'm very much looking forward to that and hopefully it comes around around christmas time because that would make sense yeah. um wish you a Merry we're gonna get copywritten <laughs> blumhouse our well, friends at Blumhouse. Always up to something. Always up to good, actually, usually, most of the time. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, they began... Th yeah, oh, God. They began filming the Invisible Man reboot. Oh, yes, yes. Definitely. Um, and actually, uh, some more news came out from the Invisible Man. It actually got moved up two weeks. Oh, did it? So it's supposed to get like a March 2020 review or um, release, and now it's getting a February 28th, 2020 release. Who? Who's directing it? Um, the same guy who's directed Saw and the Insidious movies, his name's, uh, something Lay, but he plays, I think, Tucker in, uh, Insidious. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I saw that, I saw someone post, like, oh, here in whatever they're filming at, what a good day to start shooting, and then they're like, okay, cool, yeah. in the movie. So, that's, that's, that looks pretty good, and I'm excited, because I like The Invisible Man. I'm excited because I didn't think it was actually going to happen. Well, they they did the Dark Universe reboot, and yeah. the Mummy just didn't do good in theaters, yeah. which and I so was that's why I didn't very think disappointed. It was happen. I was kind of disappointed about because I actually enjoyed that movie. I didn't watch it, but I 
heard that it wasn't good. Yeah. Uh, no, I enjoyed and I, it. And I thought they weren't going to end up doing the reboot. And so what I thought I read was that they're going to end up doing it, but it's not going to be like part of the universe. It's not, it's, yeah. It's going to be like its own separate thing, and they're going to do pretty much, yeah. Basically, whatever the heck they want. It's pretty. That's pretty much what it is. Yeah. Um, but I hope it does well because obviously Blumhouse. Either for the most part, it out of the water or truth or dare. Yeah. That's, well, it's, it's, that it's, truth or dare was an original concept though. Like yeah. when, when they get properties, like look at Halloween. When they got yeah, Halloween, it's so great out of Halloween. That's yeah. why I said they either knock it out of the water. Or like, I think they really have a middle ground. I think if they get properties that they can actually use and stuff like that. Um, like that the lease out rights and stuff. I think they do a good job usually. Yeah, and, um, and I, I, if the guy who did Insidious is directing it, I have, those movies are great. Yeah, he also did like the first couple Saw movies too. Yeah, I've never really watched the Saw movies. But, it always scared me a little bit. But. Yeah, but that's what he was known for. So, yeah. um, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. We'll definitely probably go check it out. I mean, we always like to check things out. Some horror movie and stuff. We we go to I I I could say this. Me and Sammy probably go to the movies at least once a week. Yeah, we enjoy the movies. We uh we're subscribed to the AMC A list. We're not sponsored by this, by the way, but it'd be nice if we would. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we're subscribed to that, and we we genuinely just go to the movies once a week just to check something out. Even if we've already seen the movie, we'll go watch it again. Yeah, if we really enjoyed the movie, that's the beauty of this program is we can go watch it again. Yeah. Um, Way better than Movie Pass. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. I was a subscriber to Movie Pass at one point in my life. Yeah, I was too. And I, I like this way better because we can see it in any format, yeah. buy our tickets online. It's great. Yeah, way better. Um, last bit of news Robert England, famous for Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger. He says he has one more Nightmare on Elm Street movie in him. Ooh. But he would much rather see Kevin Bacon take on the role. A passing on the Torch movie of sorts would be cool. I don't know how they could do that, though. How I have you, no idea how they would do it, yeah. Like, you have Robert England playing Freddy Krueger, and then Kevin Bacon just comes in and becomes the new Freddy Krueger? Like, how, did, how does... the mantle somehow? How does that happen? Because the way... I mean, the way it was kind of explained in the movies was, like, he went to hell, and he's, like, one of the demon offered him, like, uh, to control nightmares and stuff like that. Oh, really? From what I heard in backstories. Um, and so that's how he came back as the nightmare freaking demon ruler and shit like that. Um, so I, I don't really know how they can do that, but... If they do like a Nightmare on Elm Street movie and then like kind of something similar like Halloween where it's like a kind of, you know, years later movie and then they do a fucking like another reboot with Kevin Bacon. I, I could see that. Maybe Blumhouse picking up the reboot. That's what I was about to say. Blumhouse going to pick up that reboot too? I did. Blumhouse is trying, man. I think they were working on trying to get um, Friday the 13th, the franchise. Oh, wow. That'd be so really cool. So if they can get all the freaking – the freaking uh, the big four up there, man. That'd be freaking Leatherface, Jason, Michael, and Freddy. I'd be I, all I don't for know if it. I'm ready for a Leatherface remake though. It's been a while since we got one. I mean, we've gotten little movies like they did a, a movie just called I think Leatherface, and it was like very kind of silent when it came out, but it didn't do that good. Yeah, it's supposed to tell the origin stories of him yeah. and all that. Uh, but prior to that, it was Texas Chainsaw. 3D. I think that came out in like 2012, 2013. Yeah, that one didn't do well either. It didn't do well. So I, I, I would like to just see them reboot the franchise for a third time or fourth time. I don't. It depends. Too many times. Yeah, it depends the way you look at it. I think it'd be third or fourth time though, and just kind of do a franchise from there. Because you have the 70s one, the 2003 one. You have Texas Chainsaw, which is a reboot, and it looks like Leatherface was kind of a reboot too. Yeah. So fifth time in a way, yeah. But I think from there they should go on and do a franchise of movies. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just don't know. You have to be very careful with that movie because of like its gore. Some people don't want to watch it. I want to watch it. I mean, I know that you, I'll probably watch it too, but like I want a good story. Like I want the essence that. The Devil's Rejects in House of a Thousand Corpses caps. Yeah. It's like the way that you like like the family. Yeah. I want that to happen. Where like they're the villains yet you still root for them. Yeah. I feel like that's for me with any horror movie though. <laughs> I mean there's got to be a, di a villain that's a complete asshole where I'm just like this guy needs a die already. But yeah. most of the time I root for the villain. Yeah. Um, so I like – but even if you don't want to root for Leatherface, you kind of – I still want to be able to like have character development with the characters. Definitely. Um, yeah. Not but, just like he chases you with a chainsaw and throws you on a hook and he catches you and then eats you. Um. Or whatever. But back to the topic at hand, which is freaking Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Um, I, I'd be down to see another one last installment of, uh, 
of uh, Robert England to say kind of goodbye to the character. Yeah, because did he do the other one that was released in like maybe it was the early two thousand tens? No, he would. That was the guy who played uh, like Rorschach and stuff. So yeah, um, yeah, Rorschach played Freddy Krueger in um, A Nightmare on Elm Street. He, that's what I know him that guy for that role. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that it was a, uh, it was a fun. Uh, it, I, I mean, it was an okay reboot. I mean, they went into more detail of who he was and stuff like yeah. that, which I, that was kind of cool. But yeah, it was an it was an okay reboot. I. A lot of people thought it sucked. I didn't think it like completely sucked, but it wasn't really good. What if they Wolverined it? What do you mean? Like had like a you know in the Wolverine, uh, or no Logan? That's what I meant to say. Logan, it like an old man, Freddy Cooper. <laughs> old man, Freddy. I mean, he is an old man, so I mean. I mean, yeah, Robert England is old. I mean, it would work out immediately. Um, that'd be so cool. That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be a good send off for the character too. Um, so yeah, that's uh. That's it for the Milo Sword Podcast, number 51. 51. We're on the road to 75, and then from there, 100. Dang. We've got to start be... planning for 75. Yeah. Uh, let's, see how, let's see where that gets us. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how far down the line. If we do one every week, I, I still got to do them freaking just look at the weeks and stuff. But I'm thinking make maybe de- December, maybe January. I don't know. that would probably be January. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got a lot of stuff we're going to talk about, though. Next week on the podcast, we're going to give a full-on spoiler review of Ready or Not. Yeah. Uh, so be prepared for that because it's been out. For, it's going to at that point, it would have been out for about two weeks now. So yeah, because it just got released. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about that and uh, have some fun with that. So stay tuned on the podcast for next uh, next week. Uh, comment down below. What is your guys' um, I don't know. What should what should we have them comment this so they can more be more involved? Hmm, what can they What are you guys looking forward to the most at HHN 2019? Oh, yeah, that's a good one, obviously. Yeah, that's a good one. Since we talked about that, what are your guys' most anticipated and uh, least anticipated list? Leave it in the comments below, and we'll read them, because uh, we're going to make our list pretty soon, and maybe ours will be similar. Okay. Um, any last words, Sam? Um, like, subscribe. Comment. Comment below. All that share, fun stuff. Share us on social media. Get us to 500. Yeah, ba- make sure to tune in tomorrow for uh, our... Not Scary Farm live stream of the uh, f- um, annual pass holder event that they're going to yeah, be doing. Yeah. Um, we're going to ha- do. We're going to announce the giveaway winner tomorrow for uh, the 400 subscriber giveaway, and uh, we're just going to have a fun time. Uh, hopefully, if you guys are on there with us, ask them some ask us some questions of what we think of the event so far. They announced um, pumpkin eaters coming back, and uh, the so hollows. The hollows is coming back as a scare zone. Which one, what is the hollows about? It's uh, it's, it's a scare zone in Camp Snoopy. I'm kind of terrified of Camp Snoopy. I, I mean, I know we said we're ending the podcast, but this is just a side note. Because I heard it was actually haunted. I don't know. I heard, like... <laughs> I've, I've worked... I've both worked in that scare zone and freaking walked through that scare zone. I've never seen anything. Yeah, because I heard, like, when you actually shut the lights out, it's kind of, like, eerie in there. It's scary, yeah, but it, it. I think it gives more for the vibe. And you got to remember, there's, like, a pun- bunch of people walking through there, so you'll be all right. I mean, we going to be all right. I mean, you're not, but I will. I, I don't know. I, we'll see how far I make it through. We're going to film a bunch of episodes of Scaring Sam, so that's going to be fun. Uh, Halloween Horror Nights Edition, Not Scary Farm Edition, Haunted Hayride Edition. <laughs> uh, it's going to be hilarious. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, Rain of Terror Edition. That'd be fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe Queen Mary Edition. I don't know yet. Yeah. And if, hey, also, let us know what dates you guys are going to the haunt. Yeah. Um, we're going to release the official video of all the dates we're for sure going. Um, and then me and him are going to sit down and talk about dates. We'll go to scary farm yeah. dates. We'll go to horror nights and stuff like that. So let us know. Yeah, uh, if we'll, you're going to be at scary farm, we probably, we, we will meet you. Yeah. Uh, we'll be, I can tell you this for sure. We'll be at HHN opening night, not fan preview night. So that's the 13th. Um, we'll be at not scary farm opening night. Um, we'll be at haunted hayride opening night and, uh, we'll be at, queen mary opening weekend that's first sunday so yeah. uh catch us there and i'll leave the dates uh below and stuff like that so you can check them out um and then we're going to start planning um with our frequent fair passes and our not scary farm annual passes of what we're gonna what what's essentially going to be our schedule for things so you can either meet up with us walk in with a couple mazes and stuff just chill that night who knows we'll have fun i know uh thursdays and sundays will probably be the least packed day so that's yeah. we should take advantage of those yeah. So, thanks you guys for constantly supporting the Miles for our podcast, the channel in general. We just hit 400. We're on the road to 500 now. Yeah. 
and uh we, we we're beyond excited we love making content for you guys and um yeah thanks thank you for being part of the madhouse thank you for being part of the madhouse um and we will see you guys tomorrow